Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming today. Um, my name is Victoria. Here's my friend Cindy. And we are going to talk today about an overview of SACAR's persistence and for implementation. Um, I have, I, I'm, both Cindy and I are our Richie uh, former interns, and we started working on SACAR uh, for those internships. And uh, we are now working full time Red Hat. And we, well, fortunately, we can keep contributing to our, this project. So how many of you uh, knows what SACAR is? OK, that's a good number. Awesome. Well, just in case we prepare a brief introduction on the SACAR concepts. Um, so I, I will have this over Cindy so she can make this introduction. OK. So um, I'm going to be talking about um, what is SACAR, what isn't SACAR. I'm going to talk about its architecture. Uh, evolution, and I'm going to give you some use cases. So what is SACAR? Um, well, SACAR is the messaging uh, and uh, notification service for OpenStack. It was built for OpenStack by OpenStack. Um, on the left, you can see the mission statement. Um, to summarize, we want a um, messaging service that is scalable, uh, highly available, and efficient. So SACAR's main goal is to connect applications running on the cloud. Um, and we also want to connect uh, OpenStack projects together. Um, what is not SACAR? Um, SACAR is not like Rabbit and Q or Cupid. It doesn't aim to do what these services um, uh, strive to do. It, they may have some overlapping use cases, but SACAR is mostly focused on providing messaging for web applications. Um, it is not a queue service. It doesn't act like a standard or traditional queue service. And it is not an email service. It doesn't um, work with IMAP, and um, it, it's not for email at all. So Secar's main features is that it's multi-tenant. Um, it works with Horizon to provide authentication and uses Keystone to um, Keystone's ID to um, to find uh, queues and messages. It's component-based, so you can add different transports and different um, backend storages, and they uh, they it has different messaging patterns. Uh, Sacker provides notifications. Um, it also has uh, some, it has message delivery guarantee. It depends on your deployment and how you set it up. Um, but for the most part, it has message delivery guarantee. And it is horizontally scalable. So some use cases. Um, so SACR provides messaging for the cloud which means that if you have an application and you uh, deploy your application and want to communicate with different components within your cloud, you're able to do so with SACAR. Um, it provides self-healing applications. If you have a multiple nodes and one goes down, um, if that node were to receive messages, um, since it would be down, it, it would, you would have to resend all the messages and start from scratch. With SACAR, it picks up where the messages left off, so it's as if there had been no failure. And it's good for data processing. So you can, if you have different um, nodes that you want to do or um, distribute your data processing, it can determine which nodes are best use and balance your data processing for you. And it is used for inter-cloud communication. Um, for example, Heat uses SACAR now to provide configurations. And uh, there's some more use cases within Trove and Cola. This is the SACAR architecture. Um, if you look on the left, we have different end clients that can connect to a transport protocol. The transport protocol can be different things. Uh, in, for example, HTTP. Um, it then communicates with the API, which sends uh, messages and data to the storage. Uh, everything is modular, so you can add different transport 
and you can add different storage backends. Um, in Juno, we did not have an API. Uh, the API was kind of embedded into transport, um, which didn't allow for people to add different transports. So uh, that was fixed in Juno. And that's where the implementation started. So this is kind of the evolution of what SACR has been going through. So in Juno, we had MongoDB, SQL, Alchemy, uh, Redis, and Whiskey as a transport. Um, in Kilo, SQL, Alchemy was removed, and it was just kept as uh, management. And we also added a WebSocket in beta. In Liberty, the WebSocket was fully functional. And for Mitaka, we hope to add Swift as the storage backend. And now I'm going to hand it over to Victoria so she can talk about persistent transport. OK, so, um, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, I wanted to introduce why we started thinking about having a persistent transport alternative for, uh, to communicate with SACAR. Um, during the Shuno OpenStack Summit design sessions, we started thinking on the different applications that could benefit from the, using SACAR. And uh, we noticed that there were many applications that couldn't be implemented uh, with the uh, architecture as it was because the transport mechanism, uh, Whiskey, uh, was not um, very suitable for these use cases. And the um, characteristic across all these uh, scenarios is um, mainly web applications that need to connect uh, with the server in real time or almost real time. Um, some examples of these kind of applications include instant messaging, um, audio and video streaming, and also synchronization of content across browsers. Um, then um, we uh, started thinking, okay, what uh, kind of uh, transport would be good enough for this? And uh, uh, we considered uh, different solutions for this. Um, some of the alternatives we have been discussing um, was raw TCP, which was almost automatically discarded because the complexity of uh, implementing it in the server side and for the clients to implement the server in the client side. Uh, was too high, and uh, we didn't uh, want to reinvent the wheel there. Um, for raw TCP, um, to have an implementation with raw TCP would, would require us, um, us and the clients to implement that how the messages are transmitted, I mean the protocol, and um, the security over the connection. So it didn't make much sense at that time. Another alternative was HTTP long polling, this was a good alternative. Uh, in fact, um, before uh, WebSocket, HTTP long polling was the uh, option by default. Um, but it didn't uh, offer the expected um, persistent connection that we wanted for these use cases. Uh, we also checked WAMP. Uh, WAMP is the Web Application Messaging Protocol. Uh, this is a sub protocol for WebSocket, uh, but it also includes uh, support for messaging patterns. It provides support for RPC and policy square patterns. And we, it, this, this was an overkill for us because our API already provides support for different messaging patterns. So we only wanted the transport and it was not suitable enough. But in the case of WebSocket, um, it's, uh, it implements uh, the WebSocket protocol, and um, uh, it's, for us it was performant enough and good enough for, for our research use case. So uh, I don't think that by now WebSockets need an introduction. Um, I think it's uh, fairly famous already. Uh, but let me just highlight some of the features that it has that uh, we consider uh, that make us consider it as the definite solution for these cases. So uh, this technology provides a full duplex communication channel over a single TCP socket, and the connections are closed when either the uh, server or the client decides to close the connection. It is efficient because it doesn't have to establish a connection every time you want to send a data. Uh, it's just, you just create a connection and uh, you send all the data you have to send and you close the connection when you, you are over or when you don't need to send any more messages. 
It is simple because it was designed uh, to be compliant with HTTP. Um, the way a WebSocket communicates with the server uh, it's inter is um, seen as uh, HTTP get, get request, and then the communication gets upgraded, and it goes, and then you can start sending the uh, WebSocket uh, frames. It is firewall friendly. Uh, it uses port 80 for playing WebSocket and port 443 for uh, the secure version of WebSocket. So you don't have to ask your operator to open a determinate port uh, for the use case you want to cover. And uh, last but not less, it has a standard. Um, WebSocket has been standardized by the ISTF, and the WebSocket API is being standardized by W3C. Um, but now we when defined the technology that we wanted to add support for, uh, that wasn't enough. We had to define several aspects um, for our implementation. These aspects are mainly the message format. Uh, how does the message have to look like? Um, we need to make sure that the messages carries all the information we want and that they are uh, compatible with the current transport we have. Uh, we, well, it's uh, whiskey. And we also left the, um, the door open for new transfers to come. So we wanted to make it the most simple and uh, complete enough to, to make this happen. We also talked about uh, message serialization. Uh, basically, we want to make sure that the messages you send to the, SAC, to the SACAR server are standard and uh, that you can validate them so you know that what the, the message you are receiving has a well format that is, that is valid. Um, we are we are actually talking uh, about connection protocol and security. Um, well, I, I don't think I have to say why <laughs> why this is important, but it's something that we also had to to research and make sure that uh, we had a good um, support for this. And uh, we also discussed about which third party libraries we were going to use for this implementation. So first of all, I want to um, introduce you the message format we had come up with. Um, basically, the message format is really simple. It has three fields. It has an action field that basically has a verb indicating uh, what operation we want to perform. For instance, for uh, the queue creation, you only have to issue a queue create. Um, and basically, that's, that's pretty much it. Then you have the headers. They carry information and metadata, metadata for authentication and control in the server side. For instance, you have the expression ID, the client ID, and the XAuth token. Thus, uh, headers are used uh, to enable multi-tenancy in SACAR. And finally, you have the body that uh, for some operation, it uh, must be there, and for some operation, it doesn't need to be there. In the case of queue creation, uh, you need to specify the queue name that's um, required, but you also want, if you want to specify some metadata for the queue, um, you can also do it. Um, but for some operation, it's not needed. For instance, for, I don't know, a queue get or a queue list, it's like you don't have to specify anything else. Then uh, let's get back to message serialization. Um, we spent a lot of time discussing about this. Um, we started like our first choice was protocol buffers. Uh, it is a uh, pretty famous technology. It's uh, this, uh, developed by Google. Um, we discarded this like very uh, fast because it's not so straightforward to implement it. Uh, you need to have a compiler in the server side and the client side, and, and we didn't want to add that comp complexity, at least not in this first stage of development. Then we also um, check into message pack. Message pack was one of our favorites because it's very similar to JSON. It's very easy to read, and uh, it's very efficient. But the main problem we found with uh, message pack is that uh, the JavaScript library is pretty updated, uh, outdated and is uh, uh, not very maintained. And uh, we wanted uh, to have users and have, to have web applications to use our, um, our deployment. So um, MessagePad was, unfortunately, we had to, to move forward from that. 
And uh, cap and proto, um, it is very similar to protocol buffers. So we hit almost the same issues. It's not so straightforward to, to implement and then just we just decided to leave it for, for another cycle. So we went with JSON. Um, most of the applications in uh, OpenStack use JSON as a message serialization format. So we thought it was good enough, it is readable, and uh, at least for this first implementation is, is good enough. Um, in the next couple of cycles, we are going to, to do some research on other message serialization protocols and see if we can implement that. Okay, about connection protocol and security, fortunately in this case, we didn't have to do much work. Uh, WebSocket uh, en enables connect and a connection protocol. It uses port 80 and or port 443, depending on if you are using plain WebSockets or the secure WebSockets. And security WebSocket has a secure version and we also complemented this uh, with the uses of Keystone. Um, Every time you want to, to connect to SACAR, you are going to use an auth token, and um, um, that makes uh, the connection to SACAR safe enough. And finally, uh, the third party libraries um, we discussed to use. Um, probably the most famous right now for WebSocket is Autobahn. Uh, this is a uh, WebSocket implementation um, this is standard and uh, it allows you to use either a Sankayo or um, Tornado and um, no sorry twisted and uh, we we thought that it was a good possibility we, we, we selected Autobahn and uh, we are using the Sankayo version for it uh, for Python 3 at least and we fall back to Trollio for Python 2.6 and Python 2.7 um, it's widely used and it has support for many languages. Uh, it's very well documented and it has, uh, it has a very big team working on it and releasing new versions. So we, we thought it was the best option for this. But we also check on other options like Socket.js and Socket.io. These libraries are mostly intended to be used in the client side. It's, these are JavaScript implementations, so the support for Python, uh, they had Python alternatives, but this, they wasn't very good. And also we checked uh, WS for PI, but it was in early stage development and we didn't want so to go with it that way, so we just uh, move forward with Autobahn. And um, well, basically these are the design decisions we had to uh, face. Um, this was discussed and defined the, in the Shuna release and the Kilo release. Uh, and now we want to introduce you more or less uh, what is, how is that you had to do to interact with Sakar and how does the WebSocket API looks like. Uh, Cindy, you want to? Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Currently, uh, so let's do a review of what's currently supported by the SACAR WebSocket API. Um, so it's part of the version 2 API of SACAR, uh, but it doesn't fully support all the endpoints. And this was done because not all of them are needed. Um, SACAR has some features that, um, for example, like pooling, where um, we you, ha you have access to uh, a pool of storage. So, um, do you want to talk about sure. what? Sure. So uh, the endpoints we are supporting right now is queues, messages, claims, and subscriptions. The control side didn't ha didn't make much sense to have support for that because there are no scenarios in which you you really want a persistent solution to um, I don't know create polls or create flavors or do management operations. It's, it's, I I cannot think on a scenario in which you would need that. Please let me know if someone thinks on, on some of them. So for now, we only um, add support for, for these endpoints. And uh, more or less, um, we really don't want to bore you with uh, an example of 
how you are going to interact with each of the endpoints and for all the operations you have. But this is an example of what that would Yes, look this like. is an example for a simple operation of uh, creation for all the resources. Um, and we have the queue creation, message false, claim creation, a subscription creation. Uh, you can see that uh, a verb is used for, for all of them in the action field and you have several fields in the body um, defining if the key, the different parameters you need for each operation. Most of the uh, endpoints would look the same, the way you interact with them. And um, um, we actually, um, I was going to talk about documentation for this. We are working on the documentation for this, so you can uh, know which we are using for each of the um, operations. Um, we are in a current uh, total revamp of the documentation for SACAR because a lot of things has changed in the last couple of cycles. And uh, well, this support for this API is is, um, is one of the things we have pending and we are working on that. So fortunately, with, uh, in some weeks from now, we are going to see uh, the full documentation for this in, in the wiki page. And uh, we also uh, so thought it w was worth mentioning the future work we have planned for uh, the WebSocket uh, API. Um, we are planning to add binary support. WebSocket can transport plain text and also can, uh, can transport binary data. Currently, uh, our implementation only allows you to transmit plain text. Um, the support for binary dat data is going to be implemented in the next cycle. We are working on uh, designing how is that going to work. And that is a task that if everything goes well, is going to be implemented by an Orichi intern in the next cycle. And we expect it to have it by the mid cycle next cycle. And, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the message serialization, as I was telling earlier, um, we are fine with JSON right now. Uh, it works uh, as expected, and I think the performance is very good. But uh, we want to cut some slack on the uh, length of the message that we are transmitting right now, and maybe gain some more performance in that area. So we are probably going to revisit uh, the implementation with protocol buffers, or maybe Kafka Proto. Uh, we are we have to define it yet, but uh, if any of you have experience with those message serialization and you want to give us feedback about that, uh, we will totally appreciate that. And finally, um, I wanted to introduce you um, a use case we have been working on. Um, recently, we had some inquiries from other teams in OpenStack, and uh, one of them is Horizon. Um, they thought that maybe the usage of SACAR as a messaging system would be uh, good for them. Uh, so we have been working on a proof of concept. Unfortunately, we don't have, um, we couldn't make the demo for today. Um, we didn't think we were going to have much time to do that. <laughs> so um, basically I want to yeah, let, let you know how, how this is supposed to work and which is the use case. Uh, so Horizon right now, Let's move to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Horizon uh, right now, uh, this is just one of the use cases for Horizon. Uh, this is screenshot over here. It's pretty old. I don't know if it's Grizzly or Abana, but the, it doesn't change the essence of this. Um, Horizon right now has tables to show you information about all the resources you have in stack. Uh, for instance, here you have the instance uh, tab. And uh, for every change in a resource you have in your stack, um, Horizon is doing long polling. Like it's polling all the time to the service to know if there is a change. And this is not like very performant. Horizon is always trying to find if there is a change for all the resources you have in your stack. Uh, so uh, we discussed about that, and uh, we thought that a liberation uh, here on the slide. Liberation SACAR as is, um, as Cindy mentioned, we have support for notifications. So basically, uh, the solution we suggested to them is, is as follows. Um, you need to have a deployment with Silometer. Uh, Silometer gets all the events that happens in the stack. 
um, every change in any of the resources are notified to Silometer. And uh, Silometer creates a queue on SACAR. And Horizon ha creates a subscription to that queue in SACAR. So every change, so every message that comes to that queue in uh, SACAR is um, notified to Horizon. So Horizon has to forget, uh, doesn't need to keep pulling the rest of the services. SACAR will notify on any changes. For instance, um, in the example we were seeing in the screenshot and in another, in the another slide, uh, when you create a new instance, uh, your instance is going to be in a um, building state, and then it's going to set to active if when the resources are located. And uh, for that, it's like um, there is a certain events that Cilometer emits that um, Horizon would listen to, and uh, it doesn't have to do anything else. The, then you get that event, and uh, Horizon issues some change in uh, JavaScript code, and tables are updated, and you're done. Some other use cases that are not in the slides, but um, that we also got from the Horizon folks, are the error handling. Right now, they have to keep uh, calling all the services to know what happened and where those that happen. And usually, I, I don't know, what do you think about that? But most of the users ha have been talked to. They always complain about the information you got in the errors in Horizon. And that's because it's very hard to, to keep all the information. So Horizon, uh, Susaka would be like, uh, could make a real good uh, tool to, to improve the error handling. Uh, some use case that when Cindy mentioned, um, no, it, yeah, <laughs> the intercode. Do you want to, to introduce those two use cases? Uh, uh, so Trove uses uh, Trove currently uses SSH to um, connect to its um, what is it the yes uh, well Trove um, there are uh, some uh, projects new projects in OpenStack. There are mostly, th th those can be considered as platform as a service, not so much as infrastructure as a service. And all of them has a similar architecture in which they have um, a controller side and they have a gaze agent in the instance they launch running. So when they want to perform an operation, the controller side has to communicate with the gaze agent. Like for instance, in the case of Throw, which is that there is a service uh, when you want to create a new data store, uh, you communicate with the API of throws, you perform and throw create new data store, and that message right now goes to RabbitMQ to the guest Asian, and then that um, the data store is created in the guest. But that is not very safe, um, and there's something like happened with Zahara, uh, because you have to pass the credentials of RabbitMQ in the case for throw uh, to enable the communication between the two. And uh, it is not multi-tenant. So having um, a message solution like SACAR in the middle will allow to have all the messages isolated and um, allow to have a more safe, uh, secure environment. Um, we recently have a design session, I think it was yesterday, with Sahara. And uh, they decided we were going to, to move forward with SACAR as a solution for the communication between the two. Um, so that makes another use case for this, uh, well, I don't know if this transport, but at least for SACAR. Um, but maybe the most important for, for the web soccer arena was the Horizon one. And there's also a session happening concurrently right now and uh, yes. after <laughs> this talk. We uh, were lucky enough that we had an um, Horizon um, SACAR session. It was scheduled at the same time, uh, so in that session they are showing the demo for the w we were talking about. Um, and well, uh, in the next, uh, I think in the next slot, there is a going to be another session to, to do the same, to show the demo again because of this situation. Uh, so everybody is invited to come. Uh, I don't remember which one it was, but uh, it's in the schedule. So it's in the design summit schedule. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think we're done. Is there any questions? Sure. So you have the syndrome that the oh. there's a Q and A. So 
so you have a problem, the same problem that the Trove people have, which is um, exposing the uh, uh, Zakhar API to a virtual machine. Um, <clears throat> it is not uh, pretty much the same because in the case of Trove, you are sending your credentials to um, the guest instance. And uh, there is a feature that we don't, didn't mention that is called sign URLs that enables you to create a share resource that doesn't need authentication, uh, but you have a key on it. So it, I think it's a concept that's also, also available in AWS. So you don't have to share any credential with the guest agent. Bef before you can authenticate, you need to communicate. The, the first problem you have is that the virtual machine should never see the OpenStack control network. Yes. Uh, so right now, how it is implemented, uh, if you deploy um, a trove with the rest of, like, all in one single node, then you are sharing your RabbitMQ instance with all the resources. So, and so, so how do you get around that in Zakhar? Like with Rabbit, you have that problem. Yes, but in Zakhar, you are um, using a different queue than the one you are using for the infrastructure. You keep using uh, RabbitMQ for the infrastructure and use Zakhar only for Trove. So you don't put in a tricky situation all the information about tokens or everything you are sharing for your infrastructure. I don't know if that makes sense. Are you, are you suggesting that we use Zakhar as a replacement or? No, oh. no I'm, just, I'm just trying to understand whether Zakhar shows up in the data plane of the virtual machines or in the infrastructure? No, it's in the data plane. Okay, yeah. so you don't see it in the, as an infrastructure service is not available. Exactly. There's no endpoint for Zakhar. It is not. Okay. It's you only get a new role and you are done. <laughs> Any other question? If there's no more questions, then thank you for coming. Thank Awesome. Thank you very much. If for some reason you have any question after the session and uh, you want to reach us out, um, our IRC handles are VKMC and Cindy Payares. I'm going to publish these slides and I'm going to share the URL for that in my Twitter. So and we're also going to be at the design session happening right now for yes. Horizon and Zagar. Thank you very much again. <laughs>